Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vaughn. This is your instructor and I like to make these screencast videos from time to time, not necessarily to do your homework for you, but just to have a more traditional kind of conversation, even though we're asynchronous and online. Uh, so uh, this week I'm going to look at just some of the homework topics for homework one. Maybe later in the week we'll take a look at some of the topics for homework and quiz two. Uh, but I wanted to give you a general introduction to Math Excel if you haven't used this tool before. Um, so we're in the homework right here. You can see that there's 25 questions to do this week. You get a running total up over here about the you know percent that you have and how many points you've accumulated. And you do get multiple attempts at these questions. Uh, now, this particular question talks about using Gauss's approach. We'll get to that in just a second. But on any one of these questions, if you need some help, you can always kind of click on this button for question help. And there's this help me to solve this, which will walk you through this problem. And then at the end, it doesn't necessarily give you credit for it, but it'll generate a new copy of that question and you can try it on, on uh, your own. You can also view an example. So this one will actually walk you through another version of the problem, not the one you have, but another example. And you can step through all 14 parts in order to uh, you know, solve a, that, that same kind of a question. Uh, you can also do the, uh, you know, go to the video. There is a link to the textbook here, although I don't believe that it's a complete copy of your textbook. I know we've been having some discussions about that. Uh, they have told me that you do not get an electronic copy of the textbook with your Math Excel um, access. So you're supposed to purchase the hard copy of the textbook. Um, this isn't my choice. This is what they say at Grand Canyon. Um, and I just try to make it as painless as possible. Honestly, we're going to do most of our work here in Math Excel, and this is why I suggest to some students that you can get by with an older edition of the book. You need to look up the concepts. You want to have a reference. You want to have something that you can kind of turn to when you're really struggling about something. But really, most of the work we're going to do on a regular basis is here in Math Excel. Uh, you also have this uh, Ask My Instructor. If you close, if you if you check this box, it'll it'll send me a copy of whatever you're working on, whatever you entered, whether you got it right or whether you got it wrong. If you didn't enter anything at all, um, you can actually just send a copy of the very problem that you're working on, and it sends it to my email. Now I, I'll try to get to that as quickly as I can, but uh, you know it doesn't affect me. It doesn't show up on my computer or desktop. It it goes to the email, and the Grand Canyon email doesn't come through to my mobile device. So, you know, you're you're kind of waiting until I log on to Grand Canyon portal and then I see that you've actually sent me an email. So I, I all I'm saying is I'll get to these as quickly as I can, but uh, I wouldn't expect an instant response from something like Ask My Instructor. It, do, it doesn't uh, show up in front of me. All right, so now let's just work a couple of problems. The one thing that you're really going to get frustrated with at certain times in this course is that the Math Excel can be very particular about the way in which you enter things into the boxes. So pay particular attention to number of decimal points, or if they already gave you the equal sign, don't write another equal sign. Or if they ask for a point instead of a value, make sure you give them the coordinates of a point, and et cetera. So we'll, we'll try to sort out some of those, but also your chance of doing homework is to work out all of those bugs and really get used to the way in which the Pearson system wants you to enter information. And then when you go to take your quiz, you've kind of worked all that out and then uh, you can you can do well on the quiz. Uh, here, here's the secret. The quiz questions are taken from the homework questions. They're very similar to them. There's less uh, of them. So your homework's your chance to practice, and your quiz is your chance to kind of demonstrate your mastery of the subject each week. All right, now let's take a uh, look at that Gauss's approach. So Gauss's approach is to add the numbers forward and then add the numbers backwards. So if I take uh, one plus 102, it gives me 103. And if I 2, 2 plus 101, that gives me 103. And so if you if you add this number forward together with adding the numbers backwards, you get um, 102 copies of 103. So if you take 102 times 103, that's the sum of the numbers forward and the numbers backwards. 103, 102 different times. So you take 102 times 103, and then you're going to divide by 2 because um, you've, you've added that sum twice, once forward and once backward. That's the Gaussian approach. It is described in your textbook. And again, you can go through the show me how to solve this or, or um, any of those things that are under the question help, and they'll, they'll help you get the right answer. All right, so I'm just going to, you know, uh, I will have a calculator handy when I do this. I'm going to take 102 times 103. 
that's 10,506, and then I'll divide by two, because I did the sum twice, once forward, one forward. This tells me then that the sum is going to be 5,253. Oops, looks like my battery's running low. Hopefully I have enough juice left to finish this video. 5,253, we'll put that in here. And you see on the homework, it'll actually tell you when you get each part right, and it'll give you these nice positive affirmations. Nice work, good job, way to go. Uh, on the quiz, I believe that you have to enter the answers, and then you get all the way to the end, and then you press submit, and then you find out which ones you got right, which ones you got wrong. All right, so I'm going to just uh, skip this part B. It'll, it'll, it won't like this, but um, we'll just jump up and we'll look at maybe one other question. I'll just pick one at random here, question 16. Okay, see, it's not going to like it because I'm not done with this question, but yes, I'll go ahead and leave it. All right, find the first top five terms in the sequences with the following nth terms. So we'll do uh, maybe just part A because it's the one that's up here in front of us. So uh, we're looking at the first five terms. We're going to look at arithmetic sequences, geometric sequences, and so forth. So I'm going to start with n equals 1. And when n is equal to 1, I have 2 times 1 squared, which is 1. So 2 times 1 plus 5 is 7. So the first number is going to be 7. Okay, and the second number, I'm going to do 2 times 2 squared. So that's 2 times 4. That's 8 plus 5 is 13. The next one's going to be 2 times 3 squared. That's 2 times 9. 18 plus 5 is 23. And the next one's going to be 2 times 4 squared. That's 2 times 16. That's 32 plus 5 is 37. And the last one's going to be uh, 2 times 5 squared. 5 squared is 25 times 2 is 50 plus 5 is 55. All right, so those are the first five terms of 2n squared plus 5. I'm plugging in n equals 1, and then I'm plugging in n equals 2, and then I'm plugging in n equals 3, etc. And you can see we uh, got that particular question right. All right, I, I don't like these videos to go on for too terribly long. Um, I'm going to stop it at this point, plug in my computer so my battery doesn't die, and I hope to talk to you again soon. I hope you like this video.